Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, continuing that uh, theme and spirit of bipartisanship, I have a, a question. I know we've heard a bit about Secretarial Order uh, 3362, which focused on improving migration corridors for big game species. It's important to note that this order was issued under the Trump administration and was continued under the Biden administration, showing the broad support for wildlife movement corridors. Uh, my question is more specifically about mapping. Uh, Ms. West, since the order was issued, how was research and mapping improved, and have these improvements led to on-the-ground projects, uh, and how can Congress further support these uh, efforts? Thank you, Senator. The, the timing of the signing of the secretarial order coincided with a massive advancement in GPS technology in general, so it really was the perfect timing to be providing funding for increased data collection and mapping work. Even 10 years ago, GPS collars would only show you where and how animals move with a little blip every 12 hours. And now you can get hourly pinpoints that just help you really see specifically how and where and why the animals are moving across the landscape and using different components of their seasonal habitat along the corridor. And I mean, that's just incredibly valuable information when you're trying to figure out how to spend limited conservation dollars on the ground. You can justify the need much better with this really accurate data, and you can, um, I think, demonstrate a greater return on investment for the conservation funding that you have spent, whether it's on fence removal. Um, oftentimes, we talked about working with private landowners. If you go to a private landowner and you show them the maps and the actual data, and they can see how their fence might be impeding a corridor, they had no idea before. And once they know, then that's when the roll up your sleeves and find a solution work that my um, fellow panelists have talked about can really happen. And so the secretarial order uh, catalyzed that in a few different ways. Funding through the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grant program can support that work, but also the U.S. Geological Survey and their corridor mapping team brought not just resources in terms of money to the table, but actual technical capacity and expertise mm -hmm. to many state agencies that don't have that level of GIS capacity. And so they've been able to map um, 66, I believe it's 66, different migration routes and corridors just in 11 western states in the last five years. So that's pretty significant information. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bottom, anything from California's uh, efforts to improve uh, data that you'd like to share? Yes. So mapping results in direct action in the field. And here's an example. So our Department of Fish and Wildlife has worked with academics and also the National Park Service in the Mojave Desert. I-15 connects Los Angeles to Las Vegas. I hear the Olympics are coming to Los Angeles. It's a highly transited area. There's a private company, Brightline West, building a high-speed rail to connect Las Vegas to Los Angeles. We have desert bighorn sheep on either side of both the highway and the future rail. Not good for the sheep. The mapping, working with tribes, federal, state agencies, allowed us to identify three specific spots along that corridor where we now have a public-private partnership. I believe the commitment of two states, Senator Padilla's leadership, next year we're building three overcrossings over I-15. So when people go back and forth between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, they can see a crossing and realize desert bighorn sheep and a host of other species will be able to use it because of the mapping. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Lemus. 